Good morning. It's October 28th, 2019, and it's a beautiful day out here. We're getting back to tasting the seedling apples. Last time down there in the seedling trial rows, we got through one row, and there's another full row that has a lot of apples in it, and then a few uh, scattered ones. So we should be able to get through the rest of them today. So the same year that I planted those most of those apples that we're tasting down there in 2011, uh, those are intentional cross-pollination, so I know both parents. I also planted some open-pollinated seed from grenadine, which is just means that I don't know what the other parent is. A uh, bee picked up some pollen and, and got it on the flowers. We're going to taste one of those right now. I don't think it's quite ready, um, but this apple is looking very interesting and I haven't tasted it for about two or three weeks, so let's see what it's like. Now I hope that this comes out looking the way that it looks to me, which is almost black, you know, but every time I photograph this it comes out lighter on the camera than it looks in real life. I have Oxford black. It's blacker than that, at least right now. I mean, maybe Oxford black will shape up a little bit. Uh, King David is, is about this color sometimes, um, but, uh, you know, this is possibly the deepest, darkest, blackest red apple um, that I have, and this is the first year it's fruited. Let's see if any of these apples are showing any kind of damage or a reason I should pick them. Damaged apples will ripen earlier. So you can see like the parts that aren't in the sun are a little bit lighter red color, but the parts that get sun, I mean, look at that, it's almost black. So as you can see, this has a pink flesh color to it. I think that's gonna get quite a bit darker because my suspicion, we'll see when we taste this, but my suspicion is that these apples are gonna be closer to what grenadine is, which is a late, very late ripening apple like in in November, sometimes late November, I think, but if I remember right. And it gets a lot redder, you know, as it ripens. So these have just been getting darker on the inside and the outside like every week. Hmm, very interesting. It has a lot of the characteristics of grenadine. It's not gonna be a great dessert apple. And not to say that I wouldn't eat it as a dessert apple, but it's not going to have a lot of the characteristics that uh, would be ideal. It has a coarse, almost dry texture to the flesh. I mean, there's quite a bit of juice, but I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's kind of like dry and chewy. The skin is very thick and chewy. It's pretty tannic, which is a, it's about like grenadine, but it's not super excessive. I mean, there are quite a few over here that were more tannic, but that could be because I irrigated this tree. Besides the apple that I call Appaloosa, which was one of the first ones to fruit over there, this one has the closest taste to grenadine so far, which is just this really strong fruit, definitely berry flavor. I think this has more of a strawberry flavor than grenadine right now. I mean, we'll see how it develops, but that should get stronger as this ripens, if it's gonna ripen more. The other thing is, again, this was damaged, so it ripened kind of early. And the ones on the tree that are, if they go their full, you know, ripening cycle and don't have to be rushed, they're probably going to get redder and much more flavorful. Juice from this, I can tell you already, the juice from this is going to be just amazing. It's going to have a really unique flavor. It's going to be very pink. We'll test the sugar levels and I'll put, put it on the screen. Yeah, this is super promising and it's just such a fascinating apple because of the color. I'm thinking this could definitely be a cider apple. Downsides, it gets scab but it was real productive. Uh, you know, it's hard to say how much of a problem that's going to be. And of course, it's, a, it's different for everybody. But one thing is if it's a cider apple, you know, scab matters less because you don't have to have cosmetic fruit. So as long as it's not so bad that it's ruining the apples and you can get them, you know, get them off the tree and, and healthy to the press, then it should be good. But this is a very, very interesting. And I'm really looking forward to see how this develops over about the next four weeks, four to six weeks. Wow, flavor. I can't quite identify what it is, but it has some flavor that's real familiar that's not, uh, you know, it might be like fake strawberry. It might be like fake strawberry cereal. Nestle Quick, strawberry Nestle Quick. Let me taste that again. I'm not sure, but it's really good. So yeah, even though this texture isn't awesome, I just want to keep eating this because the flavor is so amazing. All right, we'll go down there and taste some more stuff. Well, this doesn't look too promising. Okay, here's a new one. What do we got here? Well, this is a weird looking one. It's got some pink flesh inside there. You can, can you see that? Can you guys see that? Can you see that light pink cast right there? 
pretty sure that's what that is. There's another one. It's very, very, very smooth. Like I don't see any dots on it. Really strange looking apple. We find one that's... All right, here's this oddball looking apple. This is Grenadine Golden Russet 2011 number two. Tart. This is literally bitter. There's a bitter component that's not tannin. There's just a barely a pink flush in there. But I think some of these are going to have more. I just feel like this needs to stay on the tree quite a bit longer. But I don't think it's going to be any good for really anything. Texture's no fun. Eh. Here's one that fell off right there. I mean, I'm going to cut it down yet, but it's not looking too good. Well, this tree right here, Grenadine Golden Rust at 1110, was kind of interesting. Um, does anyone know what these egg sacs are? You see these? I think they're kind of egg sac of an insect, but I don't know. I don't know what. Hopefully it's a friendly insect. Anyway, this whole big branch here was just loaded with big apples, and most of them have fallen off. So here's one. Here's one. Uh, it doesn't look like it hangs on the tree well. I mean, there were a lot of these on the tree. So let, let's just see what they taste like now. Um, last time I tasted these with uh, some friends that stopped by to visit, none of us were particularly impressed. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, let's just taste it. Let's cut this open, actually. All right, so here's what it looks like on the inside. It's a nice large apple. There was a bunch of them. It's real uniform. It's, you know, it's like a pretty even smooth shape. It's just a nice looking apple. Well, you know, I'll be interested to see how this apple develops. At this point, I'd say the, the flavor is peaking, but the flesh texture is declining. It's still very edible and I kind of want to eat it. There's something to be said for that. Like I might finish this later. The flavor has developed more away from like just a kind of apple-y red apple flavor towards more of the red flesh, you know, berry over undertone thing. Like this one's definitely getting grafted out, you know, somewhere else to, to grow, uh, to see how it develops uh, somewhere else besides here in these trial rows. And I could definitely see using it as a breeding fruit later because it, it yeah, I mean, there's a lot to be said for this apple. It's just kind of lacking the, any kind of wow factor. It may improve as it fruits more and if it gets more sun and stuff like that. So we'll see. And there we have it. Grenadine Golden Russet, 2011 number 10. A good looking apple, huh? Good size. Well, it turns out there's one of these uh, Grenadine Golden Russet 1110 with the red flesh. There's one left hanging. It's kind of a mutant because of this scab over here. Uh, I believe this was not scab prone though. And there's another one. Okay, so there's actually two. This one's hanging on or if it wants to come off. Yeah, I'd like to leave that as long as possible. So let's find uh, the ripest specimen we can of this. This looks good. This is Grenadine Golden Russet uh, 1112. You can see it has some more red, interesting red coloration on the top. Quite waxy. Very crunchy and very crisp and very juicy. All good things. There's a little bit of banana flavor in there and it still has that other weird flavor a little bit. But it's pretty intriguing. I'm, I'm actually kind of intrigued and kind of want to keep eating this. So I'll be curious to see what these do over the next uh, week or two. I'm also going to pick some prime specimens like this one, these two maybe. And I'm going to put these in the refrigerator and see how they hold up over, you know, period of unknown period of time could be weeks could be months all right this apple looks a ripe mess it's grenadine next golden russet 2011 number eight very few apples on the tree very scabby rich strong flavor so much tannin that it's making it hard for me to talk it's all like drying out my the inside of my mouth very sweet rich flavor could be a could be a cider apple i mean how, how many times can i say that you know right we're gonna pick this one because it's damaged and let's start with that. Grenadine Lady Williams, 2011, number seven. Oh. It's basically like biting into a piece of wood. Now that is a woody, hard, tannic, like it's just, that's a spitter, a true spitter. Whoa, dude, that is a primitive apple. All right, here's yet another waxy, smooth-skinned Golden Russet Grenadine Cross, 2011 number five. It's a little rougher, and it's got like a little russet at the top here. 
It's not quite as uh, smooth, dead smooth as those others, but it has a very similar characteristic. Same again with the weird smooth skinned yellow apple taint. I don't know, not too intriguing really. Fairly high tannin. Yeah, I don't, I just don't have much to say about that one. This is Grenadine Lady Williams 2011 number 10. Uh, this is not ripe, I can tell you right now. It does not look good in any way. I'm not even gonna taste that. Uh, this isn't ready. Most of these Grenadine Lady Williams crosses are not gonna be ready. This is the one I named Appaloosa, and it's almost dead. Um, I mean, it almost died. And this year, it tried to grow some apples, but it could hardly even grow leaves because it has so few roots left after the bulls nearly killed it. Um, so this is why when I get something interesting, I get it out of these rows as quick as I can. I'll graft it somewhere else. Hopefully we'll have some fruit of that to taste next year. Okay, Grenadine Lady Williams 11-3. And this is not ripe. Quite sweet. Not ripe. Grenadine Lady Williams 11-13. Nope, not ripe. Lady Williams is extremely late, so most of these are going to be very, very late apples. So Grenadine Lady Williams 11.4. That is this guy right here. I feel like it's just kind of a waste of time to taste a lot of these. Let's check this one. Yeah, another dry fleshed woody apple from the Lady Williams line. Um, very interesting. Very woody, hard, tannic, but really sweet. Again, sounds like a cider apple. Well, that's getting pretty pink there, so kind of interesting. Not for eating, but the flavor is actually nice. Grenadine Lady Williams 11-1. Well, that's a nice looking specimen there, isn't it? Now, compared to most of these Lady Williams crosses, this is definitely closer to a dessert apple, uh, but it's very tannic. It's, it's very drying. The flavor is weird, but not very good. Um, yeah, I, I maybe breeding, but... All right, we made it through those grenadine crosses, and now we're going to go through other crosses. Most of these next apples will be crosses with um, da -da 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 -da, Rubiot, which was another red-fleshed apple that's a little more refined than grenadine. It's more close to a dessert apple, which is why I started using it. Even though it doesn't have quite the same intensity of flavor, I'm sure it still carries those genes, and it is quite a nice-flavored, pretty intense-flavored, red-fleshed, red-fleshed flavored apple. Let's see what these are like. Now, while I was out the other day making that video, I somehow missed some footage, or lost it, of this apple right here. This is Wix and Rubiot 2013, number two. Mm. Mm. Okay, here's my assessment of this apple this year. Very promising, definitely promising as a breeding stock because we have the red flesh gene expressing strongly and a very sweet crab apple with Wix and like characteristics. As far as this apple goes itself, this is the second year it's fruited. It's definitely better this year than it was last year. It's promising. I want to get it out of here. I've already gotten it out of here and grafted it elsewhere, but I want to grow it out elsewhere, see how it does. There's some really interesting, rich, unusual flavor for an apple in there. Very high sugar content. I mean, juice, jelly, yeah. Somehow, like a bunch of these very sweet, cloying apples. Another one would be Muscat de Venus, which is also in that, that Wixen genetics line. Even though they have this amazing rich flavor, they somehow fall a little short as an eating, whole eating experience that I cannot describe. I keep thinking, and I taste these things like that they should be more satisfying or better somehow, and it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I haven't figured it out what it is. One thing I know for sure is that I want to keep taking those genes into other lines of other genes and mixing the mixing the pot to see what we can get with an apple that has that and has that intense sweetness and that deep richness but maybe with some more acid or some other flavor or something to just round it out but yeah so that's my assessment for this year i mean interested oh yeah i'm very very interested especially like processing uh, pressing this for juice wow yeah i mean i think there's a whole lot of potential and of course cider itself because the, the bricks is over well over 20 was it like i think it was like 24 or 26 or something like that okay here we have wixen rubiot 13.5, 2013 number five very nice looking apple very little if any scab you can see it has a little bit of red stem. That's from the Rubiot. 
fine, almost crunchy, almost waxy texture. You can see there's a little bit of red flesh developing there. Let's see how that is over here. There we go. Uh, less sweet than that last Wixen Rubiot Cross, more tart, some of the Wixen flavor, more tannin than that other one. Not as interesting, maybe? I don't know. This is the first year it's fruited, so I wouldn't be surprised if it develops a, a bit and improves some, but it's going to be fairly high tannin, I think. It's pretty tart. It almost seems like it needs a little longer on the tree. And this was the last one on the tree, so I'll have to wait for another year. All right, here's a Sweet 16 Rubiot Cross that I don't know if I should pick yet. It does look like it's yellowing, so it might be ripe. The calyx is very interesting. It looks like a, almost like an Audi belly button or something. It's kind of weird. Okay, well, it looks like this fell off. This, this is that cross right here. Here we have a Sweet 16 Rubiot Cross. Uh, the shape is definitely more from the Rubiot side. This one fell off the tree and it seems like it might be a little weird and overripe, but there's one more on the tree. Let's see what this is like. Peculiar. Pretty odd. Kind of a waxy, crunchy, but not crisp. Pretty sweet, uh, rich, fruity flavor. Peculiar, kind of weird. I'm gonna leave this one on the tree and see what it does. You can see I wrote on it in case it falls off. That's how I identified this. Okay, this appears to be, yes, off of this tree right here. It is gonna be Sweet 16 Rubiot, probably. Oop, that looks like fire blight. You see that? I have had some fire blight looking stuff in this row. Actually, look at that shoot right there. That looks fire blighted. And there's another one there, you see that? I wouldn't be surprised to have an outbreak next year. So this one is Sweet 16 Rubiot, or it could be King David Rubiot 13.9. And again, this one fell off the tree, so who knows what kind of shape it's in. It's a pretty nice looking apple, pretty uniform, no red flash, very sweet. It's got a low acid pleasant flavor, pretty tannic. Again, out in these rows, everything's a little tannic, unless it has no tendency towards tannin at all. So it'd have to be assessed further out of these rows to really know what's up with that. Look at that. So check this out. You see all those, see all those egg sacs? What are those? Someone knows. Someone out there knows. What are they? Now I'm really hoping that this row, which produced, you know, maybe like eight or 10 of the apples in this row produced this year, that next year those, these are gonna produce a lot more. Okay, what do we got here? Little scabby looking thing here. Yeah, that looks like it's not gonna get any better. Cherry Cox and Rubiot, 13.5. That is a messed up looking apple. That was too far gone to make any assessment, but it doesn't seem too promising. Certainly not at what I was after with a Cherry Cox Rubiot cross. Now here's one. This apple was kind of interesting. Cherry Cox Rubiot, again, another yellow apple. It's just too messed up. Overripe, a little pink flush. Maybe next year. Now this is closer to what I would expect from a Cherry Cox Rubiot cross. This has the Cox's orange pippin, which is, you know, where Cherry Cox came from. It has this, this odd, uh, like almost paintbrush stroke striping on it. Pretty hard. Whoa, very tannic, both bitter and tannic. I know, I kind of feel like we should leave these. They look ripe because they have this kind of yellowish cast. This one, let's try this one. Again, very tannic, like, dried up inside of the mouth. Uh, it's got the distinct striping that comes from Cox's Orange Pippin. Way underneath the surface, I can just taste a tiny bit of the Cox heritage. Yeah, this seems like a real loser, unless it's good for cider. But again, this one also has a bitter component that's literally bitter uh, and not just a dry tannic flavor. There's a lingering spice flavor that's really interesting, like, like almost like cloves or something. And who do we have here? Are we gonna pick one of these? Cause I'm not sure. Yes, we are. Okay, this is a variable in size, obviously. Not Laxton's Epicure crossed with Grenadine. I have this apple that's labeled as Laxton's Epicure, which I'm pretty sure it's not. And for some reason I crossed it with Grenadine. This one's a mealy. This one's really no good. I've already tried it. It's a pink lady Grenadine or Rubiot. Yeah. And we're almost done. I think this is the one we tasted last time that hangs on the tree really well, but it's all soft and... Nope. 
Okay guys, I'm tired of this game now. That was Rubinette uh, Rubiot 13.3. It's sweet, it's got a decent texture, it's not too tannic. It's just, uh, there's nothing remarkable about it. It's kind of just a boring apple. But, you know, we'll see. Just a couple more here, you guys. Okay, here's one that fell over that I didn't... Interesting. Looks waxy. Rubinette Rubiot 13.2. Little overripe. So that one was perfectly edible, but unremarkable in any way. A little... The texture was a little weird. Rubinette Rubiot 13.4. Rubinette is another apple with Cox's Orange Pippin heritage. You see these like pretty large watercolor looking stripes. That's where that comes from. These taste over the hill. This is much larger than Rubinette, but it has the same um, nice acid sugar balance. Um, it's got a, a bracing acidity, but it's, um, maybe this one's a little sharper. It's this here. Look how red that is. Is this a King David cross? Yep, Rubiot King David. Okay, this is Rubiot King David 14.5. I think that might be 13, actually. So this looks a lot like King David, even though it's totally messed up with scab there. Whoa! Firm, crunchy, tart, not ripe. Very interested to see what this turns into later. This one's getting grafted out somewhere. Even though it's totally not good right now. Get that out of here right now and get it growing somewhere else. Okay, this had some apples on it, but they appear to be gone. Maypole cross, it had some little red apples on it, but they're obviously fallen off or carried off. or They didn't look too promising, I can tell you. Little scabby uh, hard red crab apples, which I have a feeling a lot of these are going to be. Uh, this one looks like it just kind of shriveled up. This was a red fleshed columnar. It's very russeted. That, you see that brown? That's actually mostly russet, not whatever else you would think. But interesting that it didn't rot. It dehydrated on the tree. Well, that's that for today. I don't know if I'll do this again, probably one more time. I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on the black apple and a couple of other things. But most of those Lady Williams crosses that aren't ripe yet, they're, they're gonna be woody, like primitive things. I don't know what it is, but Lady Williams is just throwing out a lot of that stuff. There's definitely some trends, you know? You can see some trends in there uh, according to the parents, not just like similarities, but general trends like that. Lady Williams appearing to throw a lot of primitive, hard, uh, dry apples, for instance. If I feel like I've uh, learned enough interesting kind of um, general lessons or something, I might do a video on that, just talking about the whole project and updating where I'm at, where I want to go. As far as uh, what I'm keeping track of there, you know, there's a number of apples that I want out of those rows and grafted onto foundation trees like any of, you know, these trees behind me or something. Growing fruit somewhere else under better conditions and under different conditions and with more sun, more water, more food uh, on a bigger established healthy tree with a big root system because they could very well turn out quite a bit different. Uh, most of them, probably all of them, will be larger than they are in there. Uh, less tannic, um, probably less sweet. Not like they're not sweet enough. They're, they're like insanely sweet, a lot of them. But yeah, there's stuff I want to assess, stuff I definitely want to use for breeding already. I have to kind of go through all this video footage and, and write down which, which things I want to kind of get out of there and graft out somewhere else. And I'll probably call a few things. Um, we'll see.